that? Who hold this, please? People are strong, though. Okay, don't, don't you this definition of knowledge to the philosophy department? Ah, no, that's It would be interesting. Well, what they say. Uh, the they can't refuse. Okay, <laughs> the knowledge knowledge. No, I, I think, you know, the notational choice, I think, they would like. So, uh, so anyway, this is uh, David's uh, second talk, and I guess he needs no introduction since uh, he was introduced yesterday. So, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, in the next lecture, we will, um, we will use uh, these uh, pseudo distributions and, and um, these, the convex uh, relaxations that they correspond to in order to, um, um, to, to design algorithms for constraints <coughs> and reflection problems. And uh, in particular, that, that, that's, that's motivated uh, by the unique games conjecture. Um, and the unique games conjecture is a, is a conjecture about the following problem. problem that has a parameter epsilon and um, okay so how does it work so the input consists of variables x1 up to xn and um, they, they, they are they take values uh, these, these variables are over an alphabet uh, consisting of numbers from 1 to k and then we are um, David, the three markers on the podium are brand new. Okay. So they are consistent color eyes. Uh, we have a system of equations. Hmm. Doesn't look that new. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're <when> I... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> And we have a, a system of, uh, of equations in these variables. And these equations are very, uh, very simple. So you see, and uh, so these equations, you know, you ask them to be satisfied modulo, modulo k. David, yes. Could you write this okay. I think they don't see that. Okay, sure. Thanks. Yes. Okay. And um, okay, and <coughs> this uh, this prop, this instance this input so it comes. C C I J. Uh, yeah, it, it it depends on uh, yeah. So I J and C range over uh, I I J range over uh, one to n and C ranges. Uh, uh, can, can be any, anything between uh, 1 to k. But it's, yeah, so, so maybe one way to visualize it is that, you know, here you have the variables, then you have uh, edges, and um, the, between, between the variables, and, and, and they are labeled by, by numbers uh, C uh, indicating, so that's a way to encode. C, C is C sub ij, it need not be the same for all. Yes, yes, yes. Why, why is it the C or J? It doesn't depend on I and J. It depends on, on, on the specific equation. Right? Yes, yeah. So, so, so there are different ways of uh, different ways of uh, I, J, and C are all varying. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yes. So, so yeah, maybe I should have a concrete example. Yeah, so you know, C can be one, uh, three, five, and so. And so, so the 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 
the, the instance comes with a promise, and the promise is that uh, there exists a good solution. And the solution, good solution means here there exists a solution x that satisfies um, uh, uh, 1 minus epsilon fraction of the constraint. And uh, your goal is to find a solution that satisfies, uh, let's say, 0.9 of the constraint. And what the uh, Unigames conjecture says is that um, this problem is NP hard. So k here, the way I wrote it, is sort of part of the input. Um, so, so it means that you're sort of considering algorithms that should work for, for all k. But um, actually, the, they're only interested in, uh, in k that are not too large. So it's so a k, uh, let's say, is less than log n. So that's sort of an addition. You can think of it as an additional promise uh, uh, on the instance. And then the conjecture says that even with this additional promise, it still can be hard to, uh, to solve this problem. So technically, what you just stated can't be true um, for a large epsilon t. Um, why? I mean, uh, if, if epsilon is, uh, let's say, um, one, then you know that uh, you can't satisfy any of the constraints. Then no, 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 but uh, I mean, you know. Uh, well, at least you mean epsilon greater than. So, so maybe, maybe I, I mean, uh, okay, it doesn't say that it's at least one minus yeah. at least one minus epsilon. Okay. Maybe. No, but I mean, in some sense, yeah, if, if, you know. Um, okay. Right. So, so, so maybe I, I, I want that epsilon is uh, smaller than point one, just so that it's uh, compatible with, uh, with this point nine here, but. Um, Maybe by, by convention, sort of a, a problem that, that you can't solve uh, is maybe automatically NPR, at least NPR. Um, okay, and um, so that's the conjecture. And um, yeah, I mean, just to get some, some intuition about it, um, about this problem, so what happens if epsilon is equal to zero? So that's, um, that's not considered by the conjecture, but it's an interesting case to look at. So then it means that you can, you know, there exists a solution that satisfies all of the constraints, and, uh, but in that case, you know, just by some kind of uh, Gaussian relation or some you know, propagating these constraints, you can find a solution that satisfies all of the constraints. So that's that's easy. Uh, similarly, so if uh, if k is small, let's say k is equal to two, it turns out that this problem is essentially like uh, like max cut because um, you know the constraint either either, the, either and then you know c can be either uh, uh, let's say uh, zero or one. And then uh, the constraint either says that, uh, that you should assign the same label or you should, should assign different labels uh, to the um, uh, uh, to the variables, and um, and that's that's essentially uh, next cut. In particular, the algorithm that, that we mentioned that I mentioned uh, or that we saw uh, in, in the last lecture, you know, that that, that, that find that it, it would find in this in this promise it would find a solution that satisfies a one minus um, root epsilon uh, of the equations. You know, which is which is bigger than 0.9 for, for the kind of epsilon that we are interested in. Okay. So something else. Okay, and the, you know, the Unigames conjecture is uh, it has uh, you know really uh, um, uh, you know interesting implications, and so, so th therefore we're trying to understand uh, if this uh, if this conjecture is true. 
And what we'll see. Uh, so is, is this known for every fixed? Mm -hmm. Or is k equal to? Yes, uh, yes. So, so, so in general, um, if k is uh, less than 2 to the minus 1 over epsilon, significantly less than that, then uh, you can solve this problem. 2, two to the 1 over epsilon? Uh, yes. Essentially, by a uh, by similar algorithm than Williams uh, Williamson to do Charikan algorithm. Okay. But here uh, we, we are, you know, here sort of k is, it can, can, can be you know, as large as log n. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if n is large enough, then, which is sort of the kind of thing that you're interested in for these complexity things, then uh, mm -hmm. these algorithms will fail. And uh, okay, what, what I want to show, um, what we'll discuss is an algorithm um, that solves this problem in time uh, some, somewhat better than 2 to the n. 2 to the n would be, or k to the n would be some, the trivial kind of algorithm. So it would uh, solve the problem in time 2 to the n to the epsilon to the 1 third. So 1 third is somewhat uh, not the main, uh, not the that's important, so that n to the have an epsilon aspect is, uh, is, uh, is, is the is the relevant part. And um, what's uh, maybe somewhat uh, what's sort of how, how does it relate to the Nagelsmann conjecture? It relates uh, in the following sense that uh, many uh, empty hardness Hardness proofs they rule out these kind of uh, <laughs> something for, else. Yes, so like for problems. Problems. Um, also for problems. Problems or is that the question? Yeah, I'm asking if there. Ah, uh, um, yes. Um, for example, yeah, if, if I uh, if you would have here uh, three um, equal, uh, three variables per uh, per clause, uh, and you would just uh, try to satisfy, and you have this promise, and you would just try to satisfy more than uh, one over k of the constraints, mm -hmm. then uh, that, that's an, uh, for, for this problem, the empty hardness uh, proof uh, holds out uh, this kind of. Uh, yeah, I don't understand that much. Ah, the, uh, this one. Yeah. Um, so you say that people have proved things for yes, yes. hardness so results for which they need to have the values of epsilon for which you can do This is under some assumption. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, yeah. so, yes. so the assumption is uh, that um, uh, you know, NP is not a subset of uh, uh, You know, the, the three, you know, that you can't have uh, this kind of algorithm for uh, NPR problems. It's not a yeah. subset. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You also stated that this kind of algorithm rules out many NP hardness proofs. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, yeah, exactly. so that's a uh, contrapositive uh, uh, way of uh, saying this. So, 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 yes. so it means that these kind of uh, reductions which are for example, you know, gadget reductions from uh, from label cover, uh, which is sort of the typical kind of uh, hardness um, reductions for these promise problems. They, um, they they usually the reason is why they rule out these kind of algorithms is that the reduction runs in linear time, or near, nearly linear, linear time, and uh, and that's uh, that under this assumption rules out this kind of algorithm. I mean, it's enough for the reduction to run in fixed polynomial time. Yes, yes, so, yeah, that's right. And um, yeah, but, but uh, so, so the, so we, we will see this algorithm using um, uh, pseudo distributions. And but but the way we uh, the, so the underlying techniques they they, they are also useful for um, uh, constraint satisfaction in general, especially. Uh, constraint satisfaction problems that involve two variables per constraint. Okay, now, mm 
so, so we want to uh, use uh, these uh, uh, pseudo distributions and um, to, to solve this problem. First, uh, okay, so let's let's write this problem a bit more concisely. Let define let let, let be uh, okay, let the value of an assignment x be the fraction of um, of uh, equations uh, satisfactory. Equations satisfied by x and uh, you know then the, the problem that we are trying to solve is to maximize of all possible assignments the, the, the value of the assignment so that's the optimization problem that, that we're trying to uh, solve now uh, one question is where are the polynomials here so um, so, so, so what we what we saw last time sort of re re relied on uh, uh, someone talking about polynomials, and then so, so here uh, this you know, at first it doesn't look like a polynomial, but um, turns out that there's sort of a, a generic and uh, useful transformation to make these things into uh, into polynomials. Um, Basically, the, the idea is to, uh, to to change the, the you know like here these these variables are not um, it's not it's not so good to think about them as, as real valued uh, variables and so we we will introduce new um, re real uh, real valued variables um, that uh, and, and express and sort of uh, have, have polynomials in these variables. So you want to write value of x as a polynomial? Yes, somehow. yes, mm -hmm. but not in. So the, the, yeah, maybe one confusing thing, confusing thing is that you shouldn't. So here the numbers one to k, uh, you shouldn't think of think of them as real values, but you know, so some uh, some, some some symbolic uh, uh, yes, yeah, some symbolic you know labels uh, or a finite group. And so, so some of we want now um, we want to introduce real value, you know, real variables of the real in a in a in a in a, in a natural way, and um, so so. so yeah, let me just write this as a, as a polynomial. Um, so by, by this you mean choosing a random equation from the set of equations that That's right, yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so we average over the over the over the equations. And then we um, we, we want here uh, a function that just tells us whether uh, the equation this particular equation is satisfied by x or not. And um, if you, if, if you look at, uh, if you use, uh, so, so here, uh, this notation means, um, you know, it's one if uh, this is satisfied, uh, zero otherwise. So J is equal to A plus C. Yes, so this is one uh, one way of, uh, you know, um, decomposing this, uh, one way of expressing this function. And uh, you now you can think of this here as. Um, A minus C. Shouldn't you divide this by K? Ah, uh, A minus. No. So, yeah. so, so, so um, you know, there, there can only be one term with this, this, uh, with this one. There's so only one C for all equations. So that is C three. Yes. Yeah, I guess uh, there's maybe some convention that. Uh, uh, so indices are allowed to vary, but uh, yeah. can you actually explain that um, equation again? What is the expected value? What is the distribution? Ah, so, so here, you know, we when we, when we say um, you know we want to set you know satisfy uh, this fraction of constraints. So, so, so then you know the the, uh, um, you know, the way we measure fractions is uh, so we give every every uh, equation the same weight. And uh, choice of the pair on two. Okay. Yes. But 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 there's, it's it's not like a, it's not like we have an equation for every for every pair. So okay. that's a, you know a system of, of equations. We pick a random equation, um, uh, and uh, so here we just you know measure what's the fraction um, for what fraction of equations is this. Uh, so this can be either zero or one. And so this measures for what fraction of uh, equations is this. Uh, one. Okay. Thanks. And so, so the way to think about so why is this a polynomial? So this is a polynomial in uh, you know uh, this is a degree two polynomial. 
in uh, non variables x, i, a. Defined to be in, you know, defined to be in this way. Okay, and so, so this gives, um, I guess this is just a, an example, but uh, so this gives, you know, a, a notion of degree, uh, um, of degree for, um, you know, functions. But for the kind of functions that we are looking at. In, in general, not just for, you know, for this particular function, but we'll you know, look in, in general at these kind of functions. And now we, we have a notion of saying, uh, this, you know, we have a notion of saying that what it would mean that this is a, a degree d polynomial. Okay. It's a, it, it will mean that it's a degree d polynomial in, in this term. So you're going to introduce a lot of new variables. Is it going to be x i 1 up to x i k? Uh, yes. So, so there's, uh, uh, yeah, if you want to think about it as from an algebraic point of view, then uh, those are the variables that we... Uh, and they're just going to be Boolean variables, yes. so going to live on the hybrid. Yes, that's right. I see. Yes, but, but in some sense, yeah, you, uh, it itself, um, you know, cumbersome to keep track of them, and like in, in some sense, uh, you don't need to keep track of them. Uh, it, we, we will mostly work with, uh, you know, work with functions uh, uh, of this form, and um, which is which is all of the kind of thing you know, which is which is which is the kind of thing that we want to maximize. Um, you only allow boolean variables for x, but you will. But now you're thinking about this as a real value polynomial, or not? Yeah, the values are are real. Why didn't you know uh, with with degree log n polynomials we could have just enforced uh, that our that a variable x i instead of choosing x i a takes values in the set one to k. Why did why did we why did we change variables? What, like we could have because we're we're only shooting for some exponential time anyway, right? So we could have um, you know a degree k polynomial would let us enforce that uh, x i takes values in the set one. Okay. So uh, oh, okay. Uh, um, and then we could just stick with variables x i. Yes, but now I mean so. Um, but it's also, this, this year is this year is nicer. So we, you know, you will always. I mean, these these uh, these XIA variables they will not appear uh, ever again. Okay, so, so it's just uh, so this is just to explain what it means when I, when, when, when we say that this kind of a function has degree uh, two or degree d. It means that you can express this function as a degree d polynomial in these variables. But uh, but, but we, we we will not have to deal with them explicitly. And uh, so, so it means that we will always have, you know, we'll, we can always deal with functions of this of this form. And, and so this is this is just a, a way of specifying these functions. Right? If if, 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 if I tell you, you know, if I ask, if I talk about a function uh, of this form, then um, you know, I don't I don't want to think about it as a as a as a k to the n-dimensional vector with a real value for every k to the n choices. I want to be able to represent it in a concise way. And the way we represent a function, these kind of functions in a concise way is uh, as a polynomial in, in these terms. So it's just how, how, how we, uh, it's just uh, the you know, way we, we, we will represent things sufficiently. Okay. Now, okay, so, so, so this is, uh, so now we, now we have, uh, now we see that this is, you can, in some way you can think of it as a, as a problem of maximizing a polynomial. And, um, and and so, so that will uh, uh, will allow us you know, to that will, will give us the um, will also to define what a pseudo distribution means in this case. Uh, so it's some function um, d, uh, let's see, uh, degree d. So it's a it's a function d on on assignments. And it's um, you know, we, we will uh, you know rep represent it as a degree d polynomial. In in, uh, in, in the same, same sense as this. Yes, in the, in the same sense. And um, 
now we want properties uh, of this. And uh, what are the properties that we want? So uh, again, we, we have this uh, notation to, to, um, you know, to, to work with uh, this, this function, um, which corresponds to, which is the same as, uh, you know, which is an analog of the expectation of the, of, uh, of the function. And this, you know, it, it, it will be defined for every uh, uh, real value function on this set. And uh, so the conditions that we want about uh, D is that uh, it, it should be normalized. And this means that you know, the, if you put, plug in here the one function, which just means that we sum up all the values, then we want to get up the one. It's something that uh, you know, our distribution satisfies. So we want a certain distribution to satisfy this. And another property that we wanted that we want to uh, enforce is that um, if you look at the function, that is a square of a, of a degree d over two polynomial, then this should be, then this, this expression should be non-negative. The pseudo expectation should be non-negative. So this is for all polynomials p, uh, the degree uh, was d over two. And uh, now, so this, okay, so now, now d, so far in d models, uh, a distribution over, over our set of assignments, and now we want to, um, you want to, you know, uh, you want to use the knowledge that we, you know, we, 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 we are interested in these uh, in these solutions that satisfy all constraints. And how, how, how can we um, how can we enforce that? Yeah. Uh, so we can uh, express this in the following way. Um, David. Yes. Uh, do you want? Maybe you want to think of D as the moments of a distribution, because uh, it's sort of unnatural to expect the distribution itself to be loading the polynomial. Right? Because uh, yeah, but yes. Yeah, so so in, in some yeah, yeah, you shouldn't think about you shouldn't yeah. It's you shouldn't think of um, you should maybe think of um, D as the low degree part of the distribution. So so there's some actual distribution that you have in mind. And, uh, and, and, we are, and we are looking at the low degree part of the distribution. But, I mean, does there have to be a distribution that would give these uh, moments? Um, or, you, I mean, eventually you will be optimizing for something? Yes, yes, yeah, no, no, there doesn't have to be um, a distribution uh, uh, with these moments. But, um, but the moments will satisfy all the properties that you expect uh, moments to satisfy. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the goal will be to show that it's enough uh, that they satisfy these uh, properties in order to uh, find a, a solution. But this is the definition of a pseudo distribution. Uh, yes. Of uh, degree D. Yes. And what you're writing next is is is, is extra stuff. Ah. Um, so so here uh, this 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 would I mean so far this this would here okay these two these two conditions just you know uh, correspond to saying that we have a distribution over uh, over this set over the set of assignments. And now we want to say that those assignments satisfy constraints. They satisfy a lot of constraints. They satisfy you know, this, the constraints of our, no, uh, of our instance a, here. A pseudo distribution is a real valid function yes. that satisfies the first two properties. The right. Actually, the, 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 the set of three. No. no, actually it needs more. Uh, the probability of any low degree junta event or something should be non negative, and that you can express as a low degree polynomial. Yes, yeah, so no, yeah. but that's, 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 that's the capture condition. condition okay. Just capture yeah. here. Oh. So you're saying a, a pseudo distribution of degree d is some real function uh, defined over k to that, such that it's uh, the pseudo expectation of 1 is 1, and the pseudo expectation of uh, the square of a polynomial degree at most d over 2 is non negative. Non negative, right. And, and, and so also that the pseudo expectation of uh, a monomial of degree at most d is equal to its actual expectation? No. No, no. no. no that's so there's no, there's no actual uh, distribution. So up to the second to last line, that's the definition of a pseudo expectation. I mean, so, so there's a difference between sort of, uh, I mean, so if you um, 
Well, and then what I you want to say later? The question is, say, is, is the, the new thing. line, the last line, yes. that's not part of the definition of a pseudo expectation. Ah, okay, so, it's so such you an mean, additional because I write this here? Uh, okay, so, so the, the question is. Um, <laughs> so, so it's something like, I'm interested in the material distribution of degree T you know, over, over good assignments. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, maybe I should or, or good solutions. Good solutions in the sense um, of our promise. Okay, we, 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 you know, we'd like to have a distribution. Uh, we'd, like, we'd like to have a solution that satisfies a one minus epsilon fraction of the constraints. So this is specific to this specific. And, and, yeah, and this, and this, not, this, not something. Yeah, this, uh, this, just, this is just this part, right? That's right. Okay. Aren't we just solving the dual of something like that? Say again. Aren't we just solving the dual of some linear problem? Uh, I mean. So usually, that, that would be so in these uh, in these in these relaxations, that would be the primal uh, that you're solving, or be because you're you're trying to. It's like the dual of an SDP. I mean, I don't know. Essentially, right. distribution. I mean, distribution says you know, given any non-negative function, you get a non-negative output, right? But that, but then he's saying this is too much. So you know, maybe this is too much to guarantee. So let me guarantee that just if you give me a square, which is an obviously non-negative function. I'm going to hit a non-negative output, and these are pseudo distributions because I don't guarantee that for every non-negative function I get a non-negative output just yes. for every square. Right. So, yes. and I mean, if, if, in this case, if, if, if you know, if it, if it would choose the degree to be n, then uh, you know, it would capture every function, and and, and yeah, maybe 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 that's a good exercise. If, if you choose the degree n, uh, degree d here to be n, then the first two conditions just say that we have a distribution mm -hmm. over over assign over over assignments. And this, this second condition, this, 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 this condition here, would enforce that it's a distribution over assignments that satisfy the one minus epsilon fraction of the constraints. And now what we are doing to make the th these things efficient is just that we, you know, we, we don't enforce these things for every, every degree, but only for degree up to some maybe constant uh, or sm you know, smaller number. D. What, what is P in the last line? Ah, ah yes. It's a degree, degree, a polynomial of degree at most, I think, uh, d minus two. So I just want to make sure that, like all the things that we are evaluating here, are degree um, d polynomials. So, yes, so okay. the distributions are just another name for the moment sequences of Lasserre that the Yes, 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 yes. It's just yeah. It's just that, like the. Um, uh, it's just this different way of operating with those things, and um, but the things that if, I mean, usually if, if you talk about moment sequences, then you specify the moments in a particular basis, and usually it's maybe the like, monomial basis, and uh, and that makes uh, sort of manipulating those mm -hmm. those things uh, um, cumbersome, and, uh, and and so here we, we we do it in a way that is independent of a particular choice of the of basis. For, you know. It's like an equivalent representation. Yes, it's an equivalent. Yeah, it's completely equivalent to. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not uh, uh, giving references in the, in the maybe a way I should. So um, yeah, this is you know this this idea of uh, uh, enforcing this condition of just over squares is to to yeah, maybe I should put it here. Um, so that you, can, you know the fact that you can do this efficiently is uh, comes from Shore and uh, was uh, later uh, sort of uh, fleshed out by uh, Parillo. And uh, that's it. Yeah, but some very similar idea appearing, you know, you take a book like Rudelman and Wunsch on the moment problem, and you see mm -hmm. such inequality in the Yes. 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 So, so your last constraint assumes that um, exactly one. Yeah, yeah, just, just, uh, right. yeah, just to make it things a little bit simpler. Yeah. Yeah, so this, yeah, this model's, uh, if you, have, yeah, you would have your arbitrary uh, polynomials of uh, degree n, then this year would say that uh, we have a distribution of our uh, solutions that have value, that satisfy exactly a 1 minus epsilon fraction of the constraints. And how many levels of Lasserre is this? So, so, so this, this is indicated by the degree of the polynomial. Okay, so, so this is and and, and the, the, the yeah what 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 what, uh, what these people show is that you can compute this uh, this uh, zero distribution p in time polynomial in you know into the 
uh, time uh, into the already. So David, yesterday, when you were uh, telling us about the Boolean case as opposed to this yes. AI case, yes. so today it was clear that once you compute in time and to the D, the kind of degree D part of your function mm -hmm. uh, big D, mm -hmm. then uh, you can compute that function big D everywhere because that's just like the, those are the Fourier coefficients of uh, yes. big D that you have. But, um, and that, uh, so if you're given just this degree little d uh, Fourier coefficients and the function big D that you can define this way will satisfy what those pseudo expression constraints because the higher degree terms will mm -hmm. cancel out. But now uh, it's a bit less clear what's going on because these degree little d terms that you get out of solving the Nasser relaxation, mm -hmm. they're not the Fourier coefficients of uh, this function um, big D. They are. They are. Because x i comma a. If you look at the cube, minus you think of the Boolean k as x i comma a. K and dimensional cube, then they are right. Yeah, I mean, so this. Um, I mean, yeah, the, the, you know, the, this Fourier kind of decomposition it also works for for, for general uh, kind of product uh, product spaces like uh, you know k to the n. Mm -hmm. But isn't everything here secretly Boolean anyway? Uh, so, so yeah, no, not not really because like here is there's, there's I mean there's a constraint that I'm that I'm not uh, I don't want to talk about explicitly. If, if you would just have the variables x i a, then you would have to have the additional constraint that uh, you know only one of them is one, and all others are zero, mm -hmm. right? Because um, I I it want I want it to be like an assignment like a, it should correspond to an assignment, and if you look at these things, then you know the indicators of uh, of these these events, then if I look at a particular variable x sub i, this is only one, you know, this is one exactly for one of the And so that would be some, some constraint that you would have to enforce, uh, uh, ex, you know, um, explicitly if, if you would talk about polynomials in x i a, just, just about polynomials in x i a. Mm -hmm. But here, because we talk about functions on, on this set here, um, we, uh, you don't have to deal with these things explicitly. It's, it's, all, it's all inbuilt uh, because we talk about these functions. Okay. And this, uh, so, so, so uh, yeah, so this is the object that we are getting, and um, and you see that if, you know if, if you would choose degree d here to be uh, n, then this would um, uh, this would be an actual distribution. But if you choose you know degree to be very large, then you, it's hard to compute. And uh, if you restrict the degree, but if you restrict the degree, then it becomes easier to compute. And now the goal is to uh, you know just use the info, just use the information that we get if, it, if you enforce these conditions up to degree d and uh, in order to find uh, uh, a, a solution uh, that satisfies this condition. And um, so we will... Uh, so now we, 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 you know, in order to, now, now is, so we want to use we compute this kind of uh, pseudo distribution, and now we want to use it to find a, 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 a good solution for the instance. And uh, we, we will use the fo you know, following two um, properties that are useful, useful for us in general. And the first property is that you can condition uh, pseudo distributions. And uh, you know, conditioning is just if you first think about it, just in terms of uh, distribution. So you have some random variable. Uh, and it has you know it distributed in a certain way, and now you know you create a new distribution by let's say conditioning uh, the i coordinate of the random variable to be a. Okay, so here I'm thinking of a distribution over over assignments. So distribution over what is this arrow? Ah, uh, you know, just uh, you know, just uh, what, what does conditioning mean? You know, I I, I have uh, this kind of distribution, and now I condition it. You know, condition on the event. Uh -huh. It's just uh, basically some notation. You mean you go from D to D condition? Yes, yes, X right. So, so now we have some some, some zero distribution D, and uh, we want to go to um, to a zero distribution D prime that, that corresponds to this. And um, you know you, you you can define it um, you know exactly in the way that you would define it for distributions. Um, 
you know, basically you you know you, you zero out uh, you zero out the function um, you know, when uh, uh, x xi is different from a. So you so just multiply this function by this, and now you you know you re, you renormalize, and the way we renormalize it uh, is by the probability that this event happens, and this is. Uh, You know, corresponds to uh, corresponds to this. So you know, if 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 d here would be an actual distribution, would be no negative a non-negative function, um, then uh, then this operation here is exactly uh, uh, conditioning on the event that x i is equal to a, and uh, you know we, we can we can do the same uh, 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 transformation for serial distributions. Is it obvious that you don't increase the degree? Uh, yes. So exactly that, that's what we want to what we want to verify. So. So, if you have, so the question is, if you have a degree d uh, distribution here, what what do we get out of it, right? Yeah. So the claim is that this here is a degree, uh, let's say, d minus two uh, distribution. You know, meaning meaning it satisfies all of these conditions, um, just uh, with the d. d uh, you know, a smaller by two. Okay. Does the degree necessarily drop? Um, like this variable might not participate in all. Yeah, you you could get yeah you could get lucky, um, but um, right. in some sense yeah we, we sort of um, uh, we, we worry about uh, you know we want to say that in general it, it never decreases by by more than two. But does it always decrease by two? Ah um, I no, I, I don't know I don't, I don't think so yeah right. probably not. I mean, if you know, if, if this here would be an actual distribution, then this here would still be an actual distribution. And so, so the so the reason why this is uh, why this is the case is because um, so we so we want to uh, um, you know, so, so, so now we want to say that if 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 if, if, if for, for this new object I only you know I now take you know polynomials. P that are, that have a little bit smaller degree, then then we we'll still satisfy these these conditions, okay? And and the reason why that's still the case is because what we multiplied with here, this is um, uh, this is just uh, you know this is just uh, another polynomial, and it's polyno uh, this is actually a polynomial that has um, um, that has small degree. Uh, you know, the, just just this here as a, as a function on uh, on this set. It has you know it's a polynomial that has degree one, and okay, so, so it means that um, if we you know if we if we evaluate the pseudo expectation of some function with respect to d prime, it's like evaluating the pseudo expectation under d, but of the polynomial. You know, uh, but of the but of the function, you know, multiplied by this, you know, in addition multiplied by this here. Okay, and so, but 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 multiplying by this here can can increase the degree only by one. And okay, and the reason why why we, we might lose two here um, for the degree is just because um, you know when, when you talk about squares here, then um, uh, we, we need to treat here. We need, we need to Treat this here as a, we need to treat this here as a square of a uh, of a linear. Um, uh, we need to treat this here as a square, and this is, um, you know, so, so, so this here is the same as um, just because this, this takes only values zero and one. This is the same as uh, um, you know as this polynomial which, which has degree two. Just to make yes. sure. This question. So everything that's a degree d distribution is also a degree d minus one distribution, right? That's right. Okay. Yes. That's yeah, one term. And and so you know, multiplying by this here, it um, uh, okay. Maybe I should just uh, write it down. You know. So if we look at. Uh, this kind of expression, then this is the same as um, and 
so the normalization here enforces, you know, to make sure that this here stays satisfied. And the fact that we, we multiply it here only by a square means that all these all these non-activity constraints and these these conditions they are all satisfied. They're also satisfied. And this is in some sense um, uh, you know an advantage of um, having here these equalities. So, so it means that no matter what we condition on, um, we will always we will always you know um, it, will, it will always be set. This 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 condition here will will still be satisfied, just maybe with a smaller degree. But really, I mean. So, uh, yes. so, so just to verify what your claim is that this is a degree of at least d of d minus two. Yes. Right. Just by definition, yes. degree a degree d minus two sort of distribution. In, you know, you satisfy. So it also be a higher degree. The, the yeah, yeah. Something yeah, is yeah, degree yeah. d of yeah. one yeah. d minus one. That's what yeah, okay. yeah. it always, yeah. You can always go down. That's yeah. Okay. It's going down. It's and um, okay, so, so this is this is some uh, some operation that we can uh, that we can do. Um, another another fact that is useful about uh, the distributions is um, that um, sort of marginals of zero distributions. are uh, are actual distributions. In uh, the following sense, so if we, you know, just what what does marginal mean? So if you have some distribution for a random variable x, we can look at you know the distribution just of let's say two of uh, the coordinates x i x j, and uh, we, we can do the same thing, um, the same operation um, to a zero distribution. Define now just a two distribution over two um, over um, you know two coordinates. In this way, and uh, the claim is that um, you know if this here is uh, you know at, at least uh, let's say degree I don't know four a two distribution, then. Uh, then, then this here uh, is an uh, actual distribution. Okay. And this is also something that... Um, uh, when you say A and B, because we've interpreted these to be, to be polynomials over the course of variables X sub I A, you mean the family of all variables uh, you know, that have A's or B's in the second position? So, so here, you know, B prime is now just a function that <coughs> takes, um, um, you know, uh, sort of... Uh, an assignment for two vertices, i and j, and so you can you know assign a. So a is what we assign to i, b is what we assign oh, to j. Okay. So, so what you're really saying is that if you look at d and you look at any pair yes. of coordinates, that induces an actual distribution yes. on the values of exactly. these two coordinates. Yes. Yes. And it's you know um, rejection. <coughs> yes, yes. And this is. Um, you know, so, so now and the only thing we have to verify is that this here is non-negative um, uh, for all choices of A and B. And the reason why it's non-negative is because you know this here is the same as the expectation of uh, the you know the, uh, of, the, of the indicator of, of, of this event. Mm -hmm. And uh, this this here this event here is um, is a is a, um, it's a polynomial of uh, it's actually a square of a polynomial of degree. Uh, um, yeah, maybe if I write it. But it's zero one, so the squaring doesn't doesn't change it. Uh, so, so this here is the square of a degree two polynomial, and therefore, uh, you know, by by this condition that we enforce, uh, it, it's not negative. Okay, so, so that means that for all a, a choice of a and b, this is a non-negative non number, and you can also check that it sums up to one. Um, so that means that it's a distribution. Okay. Now, okay, so we have these two properties, and the uh, question is, okay, what what can we uh, use it for? And the idea is that um, uh, we can use conditioning um, in order to create a new serial distribution where um, the variables are uncorrelated. Okay, so you can force the variables uh, to be uncorrelated on average. 
So what, what, what does it mean uh, more precisely? That means that if we have a series width of degree d that satisfies these properties, then um, we claim that there exists a degree uh, um, b minus uh, 2 times r uh, series distribution that satisfies um, you know, where, the, where the variables are uncorrelated on average. Okay, so it means that if we pick two random variables, uh, two, 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 two variables, we pick two of the variables at random, and uh, we look at the correlation between them. What's R? Ah, uh, R is a parameter that you can choose whatever you like. Could be zero. Zero. So, for, so for every R, this is true. Say again. Could be zero. Could be zero, uh, yes, but then the, the conclusion will not, be, uh, will not be interesting. Oh, then it will appear somewhere yes, else yes, as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so usually, usually these things will appear more than once. Uh, yes. Uh, right. So, so, so yes. Yeah, so here, uh, this, this is less than uh, gamma, which is this uh, log k uh, divided by r. Okay, so for every r, we claim that. Um, um, you know, there exists a degree d minus 2r a single distribution where the variables aren't correlated in, in this sense. Okay. And, um, and i stands for? Yes, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this here is the, the mutual information okay. between xi and xj. And um, so the way you can think about it is, uh, one way to think about it is that it's the, um, ah, so maybe uh, let me make this more precise. So this is with respect to some uh, distribution, some zero distribution, D, this zero distribution d prime, um, and the um, mutual information with respect to you know some distribution d, two variables, is uh, the, the amount by which the entropy drops if you condition one variable on the other variable. Yes, that's a very good question. Uh, so, can you uh, answer it? <laughs> <laughs> so, the answer is sort of already on the board. Say again? Yeah, 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 but the log can be. No, the, the, How much the log have a negative now? Yes, so that answer is on the board. Uh, just because, you know, marginals of two distributions are actual distributions. Ah, okay. mm. So, it means that, uh, like, you know, we, we always talk here about just, a, you know, the joint distribution of. No, these, 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 these things they only depend on the marginal distribution of these variables, and so it means you know everything is um, will be defined just just like for actual distributions. Why did you uh, isn't that always with respect I mean, to some particular? See? Yeah, with respect to some the particular, yeah, and, and I guess for D, I mean, D was a fixed, uh, here oh, I wanted to fix D, and uh, D prime was here a particular uh, uh, distribution, and here sort of I wanted, you know, general the definition. definition. Yeah. I'm sorry, what's, what's the relationship between D and D prime? D and D prime, ah, yes, yes, that's good. Uh, I, I forgot to write that here. So this D prime is, um, uh, is a conditioning uh, of, uh, of D. So, so you obtain d prime by conditioning uh, d uh, this way. Okay, so what's the proof? Um, you know, it will, it will not be about zero distributions. It will just be about uh, uh, distributions because we only talk about um, uh, marginals of uh, most two guys. And so the proof is that we will use as a potential um, uh, 
the average entropy of, uh, of a variable with respect to, uh, uh, to, to some statistics. Uh, <coughs> and um, notice also that here the, 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 this, this, this expectation sign and this expectation sign is not with respect to, it's not a zero expectation, it's just choosing these guys at random, uh, just choosing variables at random. And we, okay, so we use this as a potential and we, we use the following procedure. Um, you know, sort of greedily condition on uh, an event of the form, uh, you know, xi is equal to a. You know, this is such, such that. No, this is a procedure to do what? Yes, to find the to generation v prime. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. Such as the distribution, such as the potential uh, decreases the most. Okay. And the, the claim is that uh, if you follow this procedure, then uh, you will uh, arrive at, uh, eventually you will get a pseudo uh, distribution that satisfies these properties. Um, wh wh why is this the case? Um, so, 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 so let's look at the, what, what happens if you condition on a, on a random event. So, so we, sorry, on, um, on this event, uh, x i is equal to a, you know, for random i and a. So then, the the decrease in the potential, the expected decrease in the potential. <coughs> what, what do you mean by that? By the way, random according to what distribution? Yes, that's a that's a good question. I was hoping no one notices. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so so random j uh, just means a random variable, okay? And then uh, you know uniform uh, <laughs> uniform like a, from a random index. Yeah, a random index of a variable. Uniform. Uniform. Yes. <laughs> and uh, a random i means um, from the marginal distribution of um, of, of the variable x and y. And i is j. Uh, yes. 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 Sorry. So we pick an index j uniformly at random, and we pick a from the marginal distribution of the variable xj. Oh, you just have been two different ways of choosing uh, i and a. One is greedily the potential, and one is the ah, uh, so, so yeah, sorry, sorry. The, I'm using j to, to condition and uh, and i to measure the potential. I guess he wants to show the potential graphs. So, so this is the expected potential drop if, if you do this randomly, and uh, if you uh, if you if you sort of look at the, the definition of uh, this uh, this uh, mutual information, then this is the same as the um, the average mutual information between pairs. Uh, and so it means that if you would condition on a sort of on this kind of event for for, for this random choice of J and A, then um, you know, the expected decrease is at least that much, and if you do it greedily, you will decrease at least that much. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, you know, put, and this potential here is always not negative. Initially, it's at, mo it's, it's at most uh, log k, and so it means that, uh, you know, this can happen at most, um, uh, you know, that the, the degrees, that the, 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 this, this quantity is larger than um, log k over r, can happen at most uh, r, um, r times. Which, which gives you uh, this, 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 this. So we have to condition it most r times to get to a point where this here is small. No, I suppose I'm almost okay. Yeah, I think it's two, 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 one or two more minutes. Yes. So, the, so the question is, um, suppose now you have a pseudo distribution that satisfies, you know, where the variables are uncorrelated on average. The question is, what does it, um, how, how does it help? And, um, there are several ways in which, in which it helps. For example, um, what you can show is that if 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 you had um, uh, if, if your CSP instance was uh, mm -hmm. pseudo random, 
so the, the you know the instance of the CSP that you're trying to solve, which I think I erased, if, if, if it was uh, pseudo random in a, in a somewhat big sense, it, it turns out that this condition here, if, if, if you satisfy this condition, then uh, it will always also be the case that basically all the variables are fixed. So, so if, 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 that, if that condition is satisfied, it uh, it will uh, it will mean that all the variables are fixed, and then you know you can just read off an assignment. Okay, and because because you enforce this condition and you know, it's still satisfied, it means that this assignment will satisfy a, a large, you know, uh, a very good fraction of the constraints. But if but even and for unique games, even if, um, if if it's not a if, even if it's a worst case instance, you can still um, uh, you know it's still useful to have this kind of condition and. The reason why this is useful is because um, because you know that for edges, if if if, if this here is a constraint, um, and you know that is that is satisfied with, um, with 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 the large probability, which is which is the case for for most of the constraints, then it has to be the case that. Um, Either either these these variables are fixed, or the mutual or the mutual um, information is very large. Okay, so it means that in the case where the variables are not yet fixed, or in the games, it means that on on edges on edges like the, uh, the, the 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 mutual information has to be very large, and so it means that if you look at the mutual information on for diff for 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 random pairs. It's much smaller compared to the mutual information for, for uh, between between variables that, are, that that appear in the constraint together in, a, in, in, a, in an equation together, and that means that uh, this this graph that's formed by the by the equations, it um, it turns out that this means that it, that, it's that the random walk on this graph mixes very slowly, and it means that you can partition the graph into small pieces and recurse. And that, that means, this. and that that's the reason why you can use it to solve worst case instances. Because so if now either in this condition enforces that either you, you can read off an assignment or you can partition the graph into small pieces mm -hmm. and recurse. Yes, there was a question. No question. Okay, so I think uh, uh, that we can solve. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 the